Hi friends, if you like my videos, subscribe my channel and also press the bell icon for the latest updates. So in this video, I'm going to explain you about recombinant DNA technology, which is also called as rDNA technology. So this will be your first video and first series of this video of recombinant DNA technology and later further I'm going to make many more videos. So firstly let us learn about this introduction of this recombinant DNA technology or rDNA technology. Okay. So recombinant DNA technology is also called as rDNA technology and it is a phenomena in which joining together of DNA molecules from two different species and forms recombined DNA molecule and this recombined DNA molecule is called as recombinant DNA. So by this DNA it is easy to understand that firstly you are going to take two DNA molecules and in the two DNA molecules one of the molecule will be abstracted from one species and another DNA molecule will be abstracted from another species. So in this both you are going to extract these both DNA molecules from two other species and you are going to combine those both DNA molecules and once you combine these both DNA molecules another hybrid will be formed right and that hybrid is called as recombinant DNA molecule. It is called as recombinant DNA molecule because we are recombining it. We are recombining these both DNA molecules which has been abstracted from these both different species. Right. So I'm going to explain you about detail in this recombinant DNA technology by taking an example. So there are many other examples uh, like if you see this recombinant DNA technology is used in the preparation of the pharmaceutical products for the preparation of vaccines, gene therapy, DNA fingerprinting and DNA and agriculture also. And in the agriculture purpose, this is uh, very much important. I mean, this recombinant DNA technology is very much widely used technique in this agriculture. Uh, agriculture sector like for the preparation of BT cotton. So in next other video I am going to show you how the BT cotton will be prepared by this recombinant DNA technology. So to know about the discovery of this recombinant DNA technology Stanley Cohen and Herbert Boyer are the scientists who discovered the technology which is mainly useful and the technology is called as recombinant DNA technology in 1973. Right. So these are the examples which are these are the best examples uh, where uh, these are mainly formed by the technology of our DNA technology. So I am going to take one of the best example like vaccine for this preparation of the vaccines by using this rDNA technology. So now let us see how these vaccines will be prepared by this rDNA technology. So before entering into that preparation of that insulin by rDNA technology, firstly you have to know about the basic thing of this insulin and what is the main function of this insulin. Okay. So production of the insulin. Firstly, what is insulin? Insulin is a hormone which mainly helps in controlling the blood glucose levels. I mean, we know that sugars will be present in the blood, right? So it mainly helps in controlling of the sugars in our blood, right? And this insulin will be produced by the pancreas. And this insulin will promote synthesis of fatty acids, okay? And normally this will activate an enzyme called as acetyl-CoA carboxylase. So once this acetyl-CoA carboxylase will get activated, then it promotes the synthesis of fatty acids. And this insulin will get decreases, will decrease the degradation of fats by inactivating the enzyme called as TAG lipase. Okay. Triacylglycerol lipase. I mean, so it also promotes the intestinal absorption and anabolic hormone. It is called as an anabolic hormone basically. And I have said you it controls the blood glucose levels, right? So uh, blood glucose levels are nothing but the blood sugar levels. And once the blood glucose level will get increased, it is called as hyperglycemia. And once the blood glucose level is decreased, it is called as hypoglycemia. So it doesn't undergo hyperglycemia. It doesn't undergo hypoglycemia once the insulin is present in the human body. Okay. It controls this blood glucose levels. Okay, so that is the main function of this insulin. So now let us see how this insulin will get produced by this recombinant DNA technology. So the first step what you are going to do is that you are going to select an E. coli cell, Escherichia coli. Okay, and in this E. coli cell, we know that there is a presence of the plasmid, which is also called as a vector, and there will be a presence of the bacterial chromosome. And now, on the other hand, you are going to take an human cell. Okay, and in this human cell, we know that there is a presence of an insulin hormone. Right. And in this insulin hormone, there is a presence of the insulin gene. Right. So remember that. And now what you're going to do is that you're going to extract this plasmid. Plasmid is nothing but the DNA. I mean, the genome which is present in this E. coli is called as a plasmid. And now you're going to extract this plasmid from this E. coli cell. And in the same way, in other hand, also you're going to extract this insulin gene from this human cell. OK. So in this way, you're going to extract this plasmid as well as the insulin gene from this human cell. So now what you're going to do is that you're going to add restriction endonuclease enzyme on this plasmid as well as this insulin gene also. So what happens once you add this restriction endonuclease means it happens what happens is that 
it just cuts the strands of a DNA okay into the fragments I mean so here some of the fragments will get cut and will be removed because I'm going to place this restriction under nucleus enzyme at the particular segment and at that particular segment what happens is that that segment will get broken down into fragments small small fragments okay so the fragments will get removed and the remaining part of the plasmid will be taken so in this way you are going to take this plasmid once the restriction in the nucleus has been added so now on the other hand what you are going to do is that in the same way you are going to add the restriction in the nucleus enzyme to this insulin gene also so then what happens it will get broken down into the fragments right so now what you are going to do is that these modified genes with these modified genes, you are going to combine them. You are going to recombine them. So once you're going to recombine them, then what happens? It forms a recombinant DNA molecule. So now you can understand what is the meaning of this word recombinant DNA. Recombinant is nothing but the recombining the both of the modified DNA from the two species, two different species. This is the species which has been obtained from the E. coli cell, Escherichia coli. And this is the species which has been obtained from the human cell, right? So both are the different species, right? So these are the uh, both are both are the diseases different species and you are going to recombine the genes of both different species to form a recombinant DNA. Okay, so now what you are going to do now you are going to select another plasmid free E. coli plasmid free E. coli is nothing but this is a cell where the plasmid is not present plasmid free E. coli. Okay, so now what you are going to do is that you are going to inject this recombinant DNA into this plasmid free E. coli right and now what happens it forms a recombinant dna e coli cell so now why are you going why you are going to call this as recombinant dna e coli cell because here the recombinant dna has been present why because we are going to inject this recombinant dna into this plasmid free e coli so in the place of plasmid you are going to inject this recombinant dna so once you inject this recombinant dna into this plasmid free e coli then it forms a recombinant dna e coli cell right in the next step what you are going to do is that you are going to subculture all of these cells and once you culturing them then what happens is that immediately you have to extract the insulin and that insulin which will be get extracted will get injected into the patients so which type of patients the patients are where the pancreas of that patient will be unfunctional so what is the main function of the pancreas the main function of the pancreas is to produce the insulin and once the insulin will get produced then immediately our blood glucose will get maintained but if the patient if the pancreas of the patient are unfunctional then what happens then the pancreas will not secrete this insulin and once that insulin will not get secreted then the patient may lead to death because the blood glucose levels will not get maintained either he may lead to hyperglycemia or hypoglycemia okay so this is way this is the only the way where the insulin will get produced by our DNA technology in such a way that the insulin which will be finally produced will get injected into the patient where the pancreas will unfunctional or unfunctional okay so this is the uh, case where the patient so pancreas the persons of normal people whose pancreas are functional like if you see in the normal case of people the the pre pro insulin will get converted into the pro insulin and pro insulin will get converted into the insulin and the signal peptidase is an enzyme which mainly helps in the conversion of pre pro insulin to the pro insulin and carboxypeptidase is an enzyme where it mainly helps in the conversion of pro insulin to the insulin finally the insulin will be produced in the normal people whose pancreas are functional but whose pancreas are unfunctional, I mean those patients whose pancreas are unfunctional, then this RDNA technology will be used to produce the insulin and that insulin will get injected into that patient such that the patient can survive and that insulin mainly helps in a major role, it performs a major role where it mainly helps in maintaining the glucose level, okay. So this is the main procedure about this recombinant DNA technology. So if you like this video, just do like and subscribe and if you have more notes on this topic, you can join us through WhatsApp group. The link will be given in the description box. So through that link, you can join us in the WhatsApp group and if you ping me a message there, then I can give the notes for you on this topic. So if you like this video, just do like and subscribe and if you have any doubts regarding this video, please comment in the comment box. I am going to clarify your doubts immediately. Thank you.